Now, our first speaker and uh, only guest for uh, for today, Dr. Gulshan Rai. Um, Dr. Rai is the Special Secretary for Cyber Security for the Prime Minister's Office of the Government of India. Uh, he has 34 years of experience in different areas of information technology, including cyber security, e-governance, legal framework, and the Information Technology Act for e-commerce, and several related fields. At present, he is the Special Cybersecurity of the Prime Minister's Office. Prior to this, he was Director General of CERTIN, the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, and Group Information uh, Technology. <coughs> Executive Director before that of Educational and Research Network of India uh, for over seven years, and he was instrumental in setting up the first large scale education and research network in close collaboration with the leading educational and research institutions in the country. He's been the Chief Architect. The Information Technology Act, the first of its kind in India. Dr. Rai holds a doctoral degree at MTech and has published several papers and books on e commerce, cyber security, cyber laws, education, and networking, and has presented the same at several national and international conferences. It's my great pleasure to welcome uh, on stage, please, Dr. Gulshan Rai. Warm welcome, please. I profusely thank the open group for inviting me to share my thoughts or share some of the views with you and trigger to get the views from you because the subject which I deal with is a multitask subject and everyone needs to participate equally with the same right to strengthen the objective which with the subject was what. I am also grateful to Steve for saying some good words. Friends, I have been interacting with the open group for quite some time. I know how Dr. Koshi and our friend James have been coming to the country. Now it is more than three years, approximately three and a half years if I'm not wrong, going from imposter pillar to promote the activities or the ideas, good idea what the open group pursue and stand for. Heavy exposure activity and uh, what they wanted to do. So when Dr. Koshi spoke to me, of course he spoke to me about well in advance two months ago. I was quite thrilled to come and interact with you and participate in the good activity which Open Group is trying to pursue and spread out not only in this country, in other parts of the planet. I'm sure the, as we move onward, the open group also will keep on transforming their activities, because what we see in the IT and cyberspace is altogether different than what we have witnessed a couple of years ago. Today you think of any activity, whether in the personal life, professional life, defense, civil, military space, financial sector, economic sector, there are two clear distincts what you see. One is the conventional part. For example, if you have the banking sector, there is a branch, there are savings account, there are current account, there are loan account, you have a cash credit register. You go to the education sector, faculty comes, undertake research, 
teach the students that the conventional part which we are well aware of it. But the second part is the IT part in every activity. This IT part is driving the cyber part is driving the first part. Imagine can we have dessert today if the IT is missing? How much chaos was created in this demonetization exercise when people were not able to get money from the ATM or couple of days there, long lines were there. An ATM is nothing but a part of the cyber. So cyber part is becoming more important and is driving the productivity or efficiency or the objective you want to achieve as a part of it. That is the power the cyber has achieved today and in time to come it will grow and make us more in more dependent. I just put a some schematic diagram of how does the cyberspace look like. Connected world, every device today which is manufactured is connected on the net. Every device manufactured is a software built-in. Some sort of a operating system is, is sitting there in any every device, maybe smaller or smaller size software program or the larger size for software program, but everywhere some software is sitting there. This is the some sort of a diagram which I have put it. There are if you see on the globe there are internet links are going on, you got the fiber cables or the submarine cables. Then you have the e-governance program, you have the economic program, IT BPO sector, this is a Bangalore board shop, software industry, you have a data center, you have a mail center, you have ISPs who are in between there trying to connect everyone. And the recent part is the connectivity or bringing of the IoT devices on the cyberspace. As per my estimate, half a million IoT devices are already connected on the space and I presume it will be more, but whatever my estimate I could get it. It looks to be quite simple when you draw a diagram, but imagine what does it mean to us and what does it bring to us, what alarming factor it means to us and what productivity factor it brings to us. Yes, at the stroke of a press you can connect to anyone, make your bill payment, book your ticket. You can do, look at the Google, what a benefit it has brought to, you can search anything. Today if something comes in the mind, any point of time you are traveling in a car, you are sitting in a bus or you are standing anywhere, something comes in the mind, you have an instant solution type Google and in Google go to Google and type it and you will get some answer may not be correct answer, may not be the exact answer, but you will get answer for which will give you the further insight how to go about. New device comes up, gets connection on the network. New equipment comes up, gets connected on the network. It is a unique, it is a unique feature there and it is much different than what we have seen in convention. If you look at the IT sector, I, IT equipment or IT companies or you look at your ISP services and you, if you look at the internet, the complete different model is there. In a conventional equipment service provider, it is set up by a private entity used by the public entity, public, used by the public, all of us use it but set up, maintained, serviced by a private entity. He has his own rights. But when you come to the internet, can we say it is set up by a private entity? Look at the root servers, mirror servers, DNS servers, open server. These are all model is different. These are set up by the public. In the public resources, these are set up in the public sources and the users are private, we all use for our private purposes, for our official purposes it is private. 
So the entire model is different. And that makes the big difference in the what we have seen in the conventional and what we have seen. All our revenue model is different. Can you think of you are sending a WhatsApp message and you are going not going to pay anything? You are searching Google, you are not going to pay anything. It's a good efficiency, good productivity model. But then it's a complete transformation. But then it brings other challenges we face, which I will dwell on the challenges, what challenges we bring with us. And how the open group becomes important in this, that also I'll say. So this cyberspace is getting complex day by day, day by day. New software comes up, new software you load on top. You download an app on your mobile phone. You don't know from where the app has been so uh, is come from there, who has developed it. How does it go and sit inside your mobile phone and how does it interact with other phones? Is it genuine or fake? This is the world which we are dealing with this in the digital economy and has brought so many challenges. Now the same cyberspace of anonymity, virtualness or the borderless, whatever words we talk about it in, in, in a popular jargon has resulted into adverse impact on us. Because of these features only, I can open an account in anyone's name, maybe in the name of anyone, not existing there. I can morph the account and keep on transacting whatever way I want to do. I remember in 1989, there was a, some cases of virus breakout and the issue was raised in the parliament. One of the renowned politician was the chairperson in the Rajya Sabha. When the issue was raised, renowned person being from the medical field, he says, I have heard about the virus, but why you are raising it? Why you are bringing the IT into the picture? Go and talk to the medical or go and talk to All India Institute of Medical Science. That's the first time the issue was raised, virus. A, sec a parliament set up a committee. I was a member of the committee. Go around it. We went to the, came to the Bangalore also talk to the people, talk to the Microsoft and we started some exercises, the Microsoft and all. But the journey from 19, that 88 or 89, look at the journey where we have come. It used to be a simple injunction, you can spoil the website, add something, anti-India anti slogan there, put anti-Kashmir slogan there. Then we had the kind of a bots. Malware, we talk about the malware. We have the DDoS, denial of service attack there. And then now we are moving to third stage. So we have seen intrusive stage, we have seen the disruptive stage where your operations are disrupted, ransom, ransomware. We have moved into the damaging stage now. Ransomware is indication of the damaging stage where how we have moved, how we have transferred from this. At this scenario has a linkages with the complexity in the cyberspace. As the cyberspace becomes more and more complex, the complexity in this cycle also will keep on increasing. The factor which I dwell. If you look at the scenario which, worldwide scenario which we see here, Certainly, some countries are playing a lead role. The activities are, they are victims themselves. And they are source of the problems also by them. And not that those countries are promoting them. But then the automation is so much in those countries that you can see the, any type of activity 
happens there. Most of the .com servers are hosted there. Most of the .org servers are hosted there. Most of the .edu servers are hosted there. Out of 13 root server, 11 are hosted there. So naturally, when you have so much proliferation, so much transactions happening there, your malicious part also will be very high. There are about 11 things which have emerged and become very important in this era of digital economy. And when I hear, you see that mobile transactions are going to go up, these 11 trends needs to be kept in the mind. Government rules expand. Many of you would have been aware of the activity of ICANN, which manages the entire internet, situated at US. It has gone a transformation recently by adopting a multi-stakeholder approach. And right so, multi-stakeholder approach, because the technology does not distinguish between a poor and a rich, between military and civil, between a critical sector and a non-critical sector, home users or any kind of a system there. You can create your scenario from any corner, from a mobile phone or from now from, from the IoT devices. All of you would have heard in October 2016, the IoT baby monitor. A mother went and left the baby monitor, Fisher monitor to the child and it created a problem and shut down the, uh, uh, shut down the internet for a, some time. And large part, the western, western coast of the US was in a problem in October because of the baby monitor. So he's a home user. So that's why it has a multi-stakeholder kind of a role in any manner, positive or negative or not. But among all these things, the government role is expanding because whatever policy you make it, the government will have to do. So this is a fact of the life and this will happen. Cyber offense by non-state and state actor affects everyone. I have seen number of cases, I see the cases here and mind-boggling cases. The DDoS attack, denial of service attack will start. Many of the home computers will be compromised by some non-state actor, a state actor, and start launching the denial of service attack. There is no distinction. So everyone is get impacted by them. Attackers are much more adopting and evolving as compared to the people who are defending. Defender comes only as a reactive response rather than a, take a proactive response. Complexity of the cyber attacks is increasing. All of you are from the IT area. Investigating malware is becoming a challenge. Collecting the software, collecting, building signature is becoming a challenge. Ransomware has impacted entire world, our country also. You design one antidote to a problem, the next day variant comes up and again you struggle with that. One third of the internet traffic is from the SSH protocol, desktop internet protocol. And 92% traffic today on the internet is encrypted. What a problem it creates for the law enforcement and security agency. The threat detection requires collection. You know where the data to be threat detectable. Analyzing the threat, you require to know where the data will be there. Data is present, is omnipresent. You don't know where the data sets are lying, where all the data are there. So the collection of the data for the purpose of analyzing threat is a challenge. And it requires a deeper analysis. 
life safety and cyber security intersect in cross. I have quoted the example of a way we monitor. Cyber litigation has gone. I can narrate an incident. We started writing the Information Technology Act in 1998. I used to go to the law secretary because we have to get the legislation vetted from him. He will say what is the need of this. I had to struggle to explain to them. I used the service of IBM to take all the senior officers in the government to explain them what is digital signals. Hardly anyone, any legal luminary so called, they were, they were heard the jargons of the cyber. Nobody had any aptitude. Not that the position had changed dramatically today. But lot many lawyers have, lawyers have found interest in this and they are learning, they have become much more knowledgeable as compared to 1998 or maybe five years ago. Every litigation which goes as a cyber party, pen drive, Facebook, every litigation, civil litigation, criminal litigation, cyber is involved and the cyber litigation is going down. We are not able to investigate the cases, the cases are very, very high. You can, you have gone through the, that media news 3.2 debit cards. Media comes into the picture, they make it a big issue. Public comes in because everyone is affected. Somewhere some ATM ditch and 3.2 million debit cards started getting it. That's the impact. So civil litigation is increasing there as a result our civil, our the lawyers, judges, they are more now they're getting into how to understand, how to address the civil litigation part in the cyber area. Expectations are increasing. I quoted 3.2 million debit cards there. It's made so much a noise. They expect government to do something. They expect banks to do something. So expectation increasing because awareness is also increasing and certainly media has played a big role. Seminars, such seminars has played a big role in, in, in increasing the awareness of the people all across the society. As a result of everything, the trust and integrity is undermined. Today, you take any device, first thing comes in the mind, can I trust it? Where all the leakage will be there? This is the position we have come. What is today's challenge? As I said, data is omnipresent. So many transformations are happening. You have a beam, transfer the money. You have a Paytm, transfer the money. So many interfaces are there in between. Every banker is trying to introduce application where they want to do away with the use of the password. So death of the password is a visible sign, which will happen, which is happening there. This is the trend today. Data become omnipresent. How do you know? Where do you know? Whatever transaction you do, where all the data is present. In a Beam app, which is a Bharat interface for money. The flow of data is from mobile phone to BTS to the telecom equipment of the telecom service provider to NPCIL, then to banks. This is a broader category. But when you analyze each category, so many devices are come to the picture and they participate. Data is present everywhere. All routers will have some of the data there. User identity based access. Everyone is talking about user identity based. That's a trend. Certainly, we had to do that. Privacy is getting far more important. Biometric voice and fingerprint. Any application you go, it says biometrics. 
God knows whether he is verifying our story or where all he is taking it. Again, the data omnipresent, multiple technologies integration. When you send a message from your device to another device, SMS or any WhatsApp message, multi, it passes through multiple devices in deploying multiple technologies. Malware is a part of the part of the day, a part of your life. Can anyone say that mobile phone does not have a malware? You don't know the app you are downloading is authenticated, not authenticated, with what software, what malware is being shown. Take it guaranteed that every, every mobile device has some or the other malware built in into that or downloaded into that any point of the time. Now we have to build up embedded security to address all. So how do we, these are the trends and these poses the challenges too. These are the challenges we need to address if we have to move, if we have to move in the digital society and the digital economy. Now, what do we see worldwide, as I said, is a unique feature set up and maintained by public and used by the private. The result is this, that much of this global infrastructure is unsupported or operating with the known vulnerability. Still, ATMs in most part of the world and certainly in India, they are still use the old PC XP operating software. Microsoft has withdrawn. They are not supporting the security, providing the security patches, vulnerabilities are there. You get the router, how many of them are patched up regularly? I have seen antivirus software, the companies are marketing automated solution there. They put a console where you have a large number of systems, 10,000, 2,000, 1 lakh system, an organization, interconnected system. They want to put the console and want to upgrade antivirus. It never happens. The console shows some figure, it never happens there. So unpatching is a is an issue in this interconnected world. Many of the vulnerabilities are very old. I give an example to PC XP. Many of the devices, camera devices and interface with it is old devices there. And today's interconnected world, I have one account on Google. It gets connected to all. Google hang up, Google search engine, or my Gmail, everything gets my calendar. One account, one password connects there. And I access those things from a different, different devices, with different, different software, different, different vulnerabilities. None of them are patched up regularly. And the complexity of the malware is increasing, all those people. My friends here who are, who deals with the malware subject, they will certainly be aware of the issues there. Now, India has a unique footprint on the internet after US and UK. We are the second largest internet user country in the world. The internet users are almost touching 600 million today in the country. The unique mobile phone are 661 million users in a country with a population of 1.22 billion people. 661 million users are unique on phone. And certainly, 50% of whosoever has a smartphone, the percentage is now almost reaching towards 50%. They have the mobile connectivity, they have the internet connectivity also, apart from your desktop and other kind of things. So we have a significant footprint on the internet. Every device is hosted here. 
we have a statistically a gigantic problem of this passion which is in the country. Let us say we need to make something to improve the scenario and that will make a big difference. The rank of India goes up and down in terms of spam, in terms of botnet, but at any point of the time we are very high in the among the first 10 spam or the talk of botnet. Our population of the PCs or devices are increasing and this problem will come up there. India ranks high in a mobile compromise. This is scenario. And we have to see how do we deal in this scenario. How do we, as I said in the opening, Marx that is a multi stakeholder kind of approach. Government alone cannot do anything. All of us, we need to come together and to do that. We need to improve our network hygiene. The service provider, the vendors and the users have to come together sincerely to achieve the hygiene, achieve the better efficiency, better productivity or better performance of the hygiene on the network. That is first priority we need to do that. protect user everywhere. That is what we need to work together and this is where the role, certainly I would like to explore the open group. How do we work together to protect by working, designing the architecture, by promoting certain kind of application, by promoting certain culture, how do we help because this becomes a, this is becoming an important issue. We need to work together. The critical sector, critical sector which manages the information infrastructure, the power sector or other, we all need to work together. The vendors, we need to work together. The banks are a part of the critical sector. We need to work together to share the information. And only it can happen if we have a two-way intelligence sharing to a exchange of information. We need to develop some kind of a root system where we try to authenticate. I do not know how we need to work with them. Certainly, I, I talk to the open group, the CEO is here. How do we work together to create that trust and the root system where we have a trusted transactions across the devices to secure or to promote the digital efficiency. Until unless we achieve the trust and integrity, I am afraid we will have an issue on the transaction side. I deal with the IT, I deal with the cyber security, but I certainly will admit openly, I shiver when I have to do the internet transactions on for my side. I limit it to very, very bare transactions. Mindset is such a way, okay, let your wife do that, you do not do that. So, we need to come on, we need to work together and we will explore with the open group, how do we achieve, how do we make it as part of their also agenda to enhance the trust of transactions on the net or enhance the trust on cyber transactions. Friends, we are in an era which is becoming more and more complex. The cyber is, as I said for my presentation, is a much different era than what we have seen. The cyber technology is much, much more complex and much more dangerous than the nuclear technology. Nuclear bomb will come and it impacts certain a kilometer area, physically has to be transported. But the cyber area, can damage millions of the system, may, can wipe out the million of your assets, data assets there, information there and simultaneously from one to many, many to one and many different areas can go and physically does not have the protection. 
Well, we should not take the pitfall of the digital economy, the cyber part, to stop our digital economy because that's a trend. It will continue. We have we have no alternative other than to move progressively on the digital economy. The country India is resolved to move on that. Our prime minister is working very fiercely on that. He takes regular meeting that we talked about it. But we need to keep the other part and we need to work together so that we address the challenges which this technology is bringing, the innovation is bringing on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So I once again thank Open Group to give me opportunity to share my thoughts and bring out the challenges which we are and which we will face in time to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. We can take a couple of questions. Uh, Steve, may I please request you to join uh, Dr. Ryan stage? Any questions? We'll just limit to two, please. It's an honor and privilege to uh, sit in an audience and hear your good words, sir. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, just a quick question, looking at the way digitalization is evolving. Uh, in my humble opinion, we have gone past the days when, as private enterprises, we used to focus only on securing our data. Look, with the advent of Internet of Things, mobility, and cloud, most of our assets are now getting accessed by the end user devices. Bring your own device was one uh, step in that direction. What are your views in terms of building a thriving consortium of public and private partnership in the larger interest of uh, citizen experience to build a very secured infrastructure, be it in the area of mobility or Internet of Things? Can you, uh, can I, may I request you to identify yourself? Akshay Dhanak, HDFC Life. See, you are, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful to you. You are endorsing what practically I'm saying that I said that it's a multi stakeholder approach. Government alone cannot do that. And the data is lying. We don't know really where all the data is present there. The solution is a public-private kind of a approach which we need to follow there. And uh, your idea is welcome, and uh, we must have a consortium, well-defined uh, approach. How do we uh, lay down the, their uh, objective, their, uh, their terms of reference? And certainly, the public-private approach only will bring a sort of a, uh, um, can only create higher resilience. Nothing is 100% secure. We can only work together, creating a system so that we enhance the resilience of our structure or IT infrastructure for a safe transition. I certainly welcome the idea of uh, your public-private consortium. One more. Uh, good morning, sir. This is Venu Gopal uh, from BTP Technologies. Um, sir, uh, you mentioned about the challenges of devices not being patched, uh, and obviously uh, the Indian users uh, are not aware enough uh, or educated enough to manage their devices securely. Um, does the government of India intend to have um, a, a law which can enforce security patching and update by uh, mobile vendors and telecom service providers, for example, uh, for devices that they uh, mass produce? For example, uh, uh, devices from most vendors, uh, after they are released, uh, there are not regular security updates. Quite a few devices in the market today. After the first release, there is no patching being done by the vendor. So you talk about the law, or what I the miss? The yes, uh, so I'm looking at is, if uh, sometimes the law can push uh, and, uh, the prioritization by the vendors in that space. No, you're talking about the law. Uh, yeah, is there any plan from the government to, as part of the IT uh, policy, to push for a law in that space, to mandate certain levels of uh, standards in patch and updates? No, you see, the your, your question is uh, the, la the last line and the first line were slightly different. Standard, mandating standard is one part. 
mandating patching of the mobile phone is slightly, slightly different part of it. You may try to extend to that, but slightly different part of it. See, the Information Technology Act provides provisions. There are a number of provisions uh, to address this issue. But there can't be a provision in the law that every, every mobile device owner or every citizen must patch the, the device which he owns it. It's going to be very difficult to enforce it. There is a law that if anything happens from your device, then you will be held accountable. There is a criminal and civil liabilities are there. There is a section 43, 43A and section 66, 66 A in the Information Technology Act, which provide the criminal and civil liabilities there. That indirectly tells you that you got to patch your system because any malicious thing coming up, you can be booked for the damages. The law provides the compensation to victim and the law provides the punishment to the person who from the perpetrators also there. So there is a law, but I, I find difficult to reconcile the, the enacting a law where you make every citizen directly to patch it up. I have not seen any law anywhere, but it's a point which uh, you say, let me ponder and we have to think how do we do 